Peace of mind is something that many people take for granted, but in the black community, many of us don't even know what peace feels like, okay? I don't know why the hell y'all clapping at that, okay? Peace sometimes seems like a luxury that will never be afforded to us in good old America. That's why tonight, I want to explore ways to go to hell, okay? The ghetto prophet Brad T. Jordan once said, I sit alone in my four-cornered room staring at candles. Now, I know that a lot of side chicks have had that same experience on Valentine's Day, okay? <laughs> Birthdays, all right? Alone, sitting in a room with a cake you had to buy yourself. <laughs> but that wasn't the case with Mr. Scarface, okay? He was talking about something that's far too often undiagnosed amongst black people, anxiety, all right? I'm feeling a little bit now, if I'm being honest, all right? It's that feeling, of, that feeling of fear and worry, all right? For many black people, anxiety is a way of life. We don't want it, but we've learned to live with it. It's always there, like herpes, okay? <laughs> Who out there got it? <laughs> Not herpes, anxiety. <laughs> Jesus. Come on. Mind you, though, in regards to herpes, at least one out of four, you have it. Do you want me to count? Uh, no, don't, wor don't worry about it. One, two, never mind. Uh, anyway, generational trauma is real, okay? Renowned philosopher Carl Jung explains how anxiety is genetically inherited and not just shaped by personal experience, okay? I think about growing up in my beloved Monk's Corner, South Carolina, 843 all day, and my grandmother saying, not nah, those people in the woods coming to get me, not. Nah. She had to be suffering from anxiety. That's what the nerve medication was for. She would also tell us that we would get struck by lightning if we talked on the phone during thunderstorms, but <laughs> she might have been right about that one. Uh, then there's my dad. You know, he used to sleep with a knife and a gun next to his bed like he was a ghetto John Wick because he thought the devil was after him. He really thought a 357 was going to stop Satan, okay? <laughs> In 2018, though, my dad confessed to me that he was on 10 to 12 different medications. He was seeing a therapist twice a week and that he tried to commit suicide back in the day. I remember asking my mom about it, and she thought he was playing crazy to get a check, okay? <laughs> I'm si he did get that check, though, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right? I'm simply telling y'all this because that same paranoia and anxiety existed in me as well. And I wish my father would have told me what he had experienced earlier, because then I wouldn't have grown up thinking I was just, uh, for lack of a better term, scary bitch-ass nigga, okay? <laughs> I need a little moment, man. Hold on one second, hold on. You ain't a bitch-ass nigga. You the realest nigga on late night. Damn, you make ball look good. Man, Morris Chestnut ain't got shit on you. Oh. <sighs> All right. Okay. Thank you. That, that, that's what we call real nigga affirmations, okay? You gotta give yourselves those from time to time. Now, where were we? Uh, in the 1992 street noir classic, Juice, Tupac gave a stellar performance as Bishop, okay? A young brother with clear mental health issues. They referenced it several times throughout the movie by calling him crazy. In fact, they show you the trauma was generational because Bishop's dad clearly had a mental illness, probably PTSD, because according to Rodimez, and I don't know if y'all remember this, Bishop's dad was the prison hoe. His words, not mine, okay? <laughs> prison alone is traumatizing enough. Getting violated in prison, getting violated in prison only adds to that trauma, okay? By the way, we don't discuss the sexual abuse that men endure enough. Okay, I've spoken often about getting molested when I was eight. I, I didn't even start unpacking the effects that had on me until I was like 40. Now, I made the woman stop because I didn't like the smell of her jerry curl. <laughs> at least that's how my young brain processed it at the time. But jerry curl juice was not the juice I was discussing, so let's get back to it. <laughs> now, I know it was a movie, but great art imitates life. It's not just the brothers and sisters in the military who watched their friends get blown up in Iraq who suffer from PTSD. Living in a brutal environment or being a victim of violence can also give you PTSD. I suffer from some PTSD, not just because of traumas from my childhood, but because of more recent shit like this. Drops, man. I need a drop, son. Ooh. I need a drop, baby. What's up? Come on. 
Let's get a drop. Dre, tell me I look like Morris Chestnut again, please. Come on. Morris Come on. Chestnut ain't got shit on you, oh. player. <laughs> now, in that moment, my body had a natural reaction to stress, okay? Fight or flight. If you watch the extended cut of that video, you'll see, I flew, okay? <laughs> I got my wings that day. So what I want to discuss tonight is why trauma has been normalized in the black community, but not healing, okay? Why do we overlook, yes, yes. Why do we overlook mental illness and undermine our own mental health? I want us to heal as a people so we don't have another generation of trauma passing itself off as culture, okay? Who in here has ever joked with your friends about how your parents used to beat your ass as a kid? You know? I had to go pick my own switch. My mama tried to run me over with a car. My daddy beat me with an extension cord and made me go take a bath. True story, by the way, okay? And then after you discuss these Wu-Tang torture tactics, you, you laugh and high-five each other for no damn reason. All you did was take your horse down to the old trauma road. And on the inside, I know you cry until you can't no more, okay? <laughs> Speaking of crying, any of y'all's parents used to say, shut up before I give you something to cry about? Yeah. Well, guess what? For a lot of parents, mission accomplished, okay? In fact, I'm still crying now as an adult in therapy, all right? This is not an indictment, though, of any of our parents, especially not mine. They were doing the best they could with what they had, all right? Violence, that's right. Speak to all the parents out there. Violence is a common form of discipline within the black community. You got that from your white devil damn depressor, okay? Physical violence was used on enslaved Africans, and we've adopted it in our culture as a means to punish children, which often results in unaddressed psychological harm. Did y'all know in 1851, a cracker-ass cracker named Samuel A. Cartwright, okay, he was a physician, he wrote that enslaved Africans who wanted to flee captivity suffered from a mental illness called drapetomania. Drapetomania is defined as an uncontrollable or an insane impulse to wander. Who wouldn't want to wander away from slavery, okay? <laughs> My God. The point is, our trauma is heavy and real. And all we're using to manage it is self-care or self-medication. Smoke a little something. Yeah. Drink a little something. <laughs> Bust a little nut and go to sleep. <laughs> a piece of ass, a piece of ass will not give you a peace of mind, okay? <laughs> I might be lying. Okay, I might be lying. With the right person, it absolutely will. That's why I got a newborn at the house right now. All right? But I am positively sure drugs are not healthy cures for mental anguish, okay? I love Moneybag, yo. But I hate in his old Deline Waukesha when he says, in my feelings, she my therapist, I'ma talk to this cup. No! <laughs> Fuck that cup, okay? <laughs> I want my brothers and sisters to lean toward healthier resources <laughs> to process and manage our feelings, okay? I know. And I know some of y'all out there watching and y'all yelling, but Uncle Shala, I got Jesus, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah, that's beautiful. But your pastor isn't a trained psychotherapist, all right? We need God and therapy. Can I get a witness? Yeah. All right. But I do thank God that we are now normalizing the conversation on mental health and healing. And that healing process starts with the man or woman in the mirror, okay? He, she, we, and they need to change our ways. <laughs> no message can be any clearer. <laughs> if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. <laughs> 